Hey, what is up guys? This is Larry with Financial Lift. And today I want to talk about deciding whether or not it's worth going to college. You know, a lot of people end up at this position trying to decide whether or not it's worth all the effort, time and money spent on going to college. Even if you're in college, a lot of people find themselves doubting whether their major was the right choice, whether it's actually gonna pay off in the end. And I kind of think I could give it a unique perspective on this, sharing my own personal story. Reason being is that throughout my college experience, not only did I attend a community college at one point, as well as a state college and a private school or a private college. But there is a time there where I went to school and ended up dropping out of college and swearing off college altogether, saying it's not worth it, I don't need it. And then going back to college and not even that, but I ended up getting my master's afterwards. So kind of just that progression of going from one train of thought of college is definitely not for me, not worth it, it's kind of a waste of time going all the way to the point where I think it's worth the time and money and effort. And in the end, I'm gonna just say this off the bat is that, you know, you really shouldn't be too opinionated one way or another. You know, there are definitely situations where it's not worth going to college and there's definitely situations where it is worth going to college. And just by sharing my own personal advice and experience, I think that might give some insight into whether or not you should go to college. So to kind of start from the beginning, when I first decided on which college I was gonna to go to, it was because I had graduated high school a little bit early and I didn't necessarily have, or at least I felt like I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of research on whether or not college was worth it, which major I wanted to do, kind of figuring out the average salary of people graduating from this college. You know, I just decided this is a private college that I felt was adequate enough and I'm gonna go to. And I think I ended up only applying to like maybe one other college and that just kind of shows that I didn't really spend the time and, and effort figuring out which college was right for me, which that right there is kind of mistake number one. You know, a lot of people end up spending, you know, hours and days and days researching which new phone they're gonna get or which car they're gonna buy. But yeah, when it comes to college, I feel like a lot of people don't end up doing the amount of required time. You know, it's something you're gonna spend thousands and thousands of dollars in four years of your time. So it's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to research a lot in depth of. You know, there's a lot of variation out there as far as colleges. You know, there's colleges out there that you know, they don't necessarily cost thousands and thousands of dollars and they provide a pretty good return on investment as far as the initial cost of attendance versus the average salary you'll get once you graduate. So for the most part, if you're saying that you, you can't go to college or you don't wanna to go to college because there's not a fit out there for you, I would at least challenge that idea a little bit just because there's so many colleges out there that there's bound to at least be you know one college out there that's a right fit for you that you're still able to attend afford and you know you can get in as far as like good test grades and stuff like that um, but that's not necessarily to say that college is right for everybody i'm just saying that if you're simply not going because you just you know you looked at two or three different colleges and you just kind of given up and said there's not a right fit out there for me, I would at least push you to at least look into further options. Now, once I was in college, I actually had decided that I was gonna double major in math and physics and get a minor in computer science, which, you know, obviously is very overly ambitious, at least for me, or most people anyways, is pretty ambitious, and that I wasn't gonna necessarily take any extra time as far as, you know, staying at college for fifth year or anything like that. And I had plenty of people there telling me that, you know, that's that's a lot of work, that's gonna take a lot of time and effort, but that only made me want to do it more, which kind of gets into a mentality that I'll touch on later that was a major flaw of mine that I actually see is pretty common in a lot of people that decide college isn't right for them. But what I would at least say right now is that there tends to be this, you know, hesitation as far as getting advice from parents or older people or people that have been in college, just because a lot of younger people, including myself when I was in college, just tended to believe that, well, my situation is unique and different. You know, your advice is outdated. I don't necessarily need your advice. And it's kind of funny because we tend to end up getting advice from like a stranger on YouTube like myself versus getting you know advice from people that aren't strangers, you know, like your own parents, for example. Now, eventually in my first year of college, you know, I struggled a lot because I was trying to take on this double major and I was also trying to take advantage of various, you know, clubs that they were out there and I was also working part-time. So I definitely was, you know, I had a lot more on my plate than I could handle. And because of that, I, I quickly realized that there's a huge difference between being good at a typical subject. For example, I, I was always good at math and science, and there's a difference between that and being highly motivated or passionate about a certain subject. 
you know, it was very evident to me, especially in my different calculus classes I was taking, you know, there's people there that they loved learning about it. They, you know, whether or not they did well on a test wasn't necessarily at the forefront of their mind. They were more concerned about just learning the material, being excited about it versus me. You know, it was just something I was good at, but being good at a subject will get you, you know, pretty far, but it won't get you far enough as far as, you know, something that you're trying to dedicate the rest of your life to, which is something I had to evaluate and quickly realize is, you know, if I'm just doing math and physics because I'm good at it, but this is something that's going to be my career path for the rest of my life then kind of what is the overall purpose if I'm just majoring in something that I'm not even passionate about, I'm gonna spend you know eight hours a day working on on a subject that I'm not necessarily passionate about or a job and I don't necessarily care for. So that's definitely a consideration that happens to a lot of people. So my two bits of advice of that would be one, you know, you have to understand that there's plenty of people that still don't necessarily know what they're passionate about. You know, they're in their 30s or 40s and working a career or a job that they don't necessarily care too much for. And they're still struggling to find, you know, find out what they're passionate about. And the reason I mentioned that is not because I hope that you're in your 40s or 50s and, you know, still haven't figured it out. The reason I mention it is because I want people to recognize it's okay to not necessarily know what you're passionate about, especially when you're in your 20s. But that and, and that's going to be a continuous evolving process. You know, there may be something you're passionate about right now, but that could change, you know, when you're in 30s and your 40s. The second bit of advice I would give is that once you're in college, you know, I would definitely focus on the gen ads, the general classes, whereas, you know, some people get very excited. For example, if you're majoring in physics, you know, you may want to take a physics class right off the bat because that's what it's all been about, right? That's what you're going to college for, not necessarily English. So it makes it pretty demotivating when all the classes you're taking don't relate to your major at all, which I understand that that sentiment. But the reason I kind of caution against to just jumping into your major classes right off, you know, right from the beginning is because then you, you know, kind of push yourself into this, you know, corner. Because if you end up spending, you know, a lot of time and money on physics courses, then, you know, if you find yourself two years down the road in college and you realize that you don't necessarily want to major in physics anymore and you want to change to, you know, agriculture or something like that, then what's going to happen is that you won't be willing to change because you already spent all this time and money into that class. So back to my own college experience, when I was in college at my first year, I ended up kind of doing pretty poorly as far as my coursework because I just had too much on my plate. And so that ended up causing me to get to this point where I decided, you know what, college isn't right for me. I'm going to drop out altogether and I don't even need college to be successful. And I'm just going to continue to work, you know, full time at this job that I was working at. And I was actually so passionate about or so convinced that I didn't need college. That I ended up, you know, registering a, a URL for this blog website that was just dedicated to talking about why you didn't necessarily need college. I didn't end up actually in, in, even posting anything on there, maybe just one blog post. But the whole point is that I was so convinced that I didn't need college and that I swore off college altogether. And so around this time for me, I was actually making enough and saving enough that I thought I could actually end up buying a house at 18. And I actually just did a re video recently about that whole experience of buying a house at 18. But the whole point was that I was very, I was doing pretty well at the time and I just, I thought I didn't necessarily need college. And that kind of gets into this overall point that I think people are very opinionated as far as whether or not to go to college. You know, there are people that have found success when they didn't get a college degree. And so they think that that rule applies to everybody, that everybody should be an entrepreneur. Everybody should open up their own business. And that isn't necessarily the case for everybody. The reverse being true too, you know, there's a lot of people that get a master's or bachelor's or PhD and they work a traditional career path. They work up their way up the corporate ladder. And so then they just think that everybody should go to college and that's not necessarily the truth either. And this opinionated belief even happened to myself. You know, once I wasn't going to college anymore, I kind of told people that, you know, I can make it without a college degree. And they would tell me, well, statistically, you know, you're way more likely to be successful if you have a college degree, which is true. But then I would give these one off examples about what about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs? You know, they didn't have a college degree and I could be successful like them if I just kind of dedicated my effort and my knowledge. And they would kind of counter that point by saying, you know, those are one off examples you know, Bill Gates was a genius or Steve Jobs just happened to come across the right idea. And what I kind of took that as indirectly is that, you know, then I couldn't be the one to come up with an idea or that I wasn't smart enough to be someone like the next Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. So it only kind of pushed me even further to prove people wrong 
that I wanted to prove to people that I didn't need a college degree to be successful, which obviously is a complete wrong mentality, which luckily I broke that mentality eventually. But I just wanted to share that experience because I feel like a lot of people who don't go to college end up having, or at least dropping out of college too, end up having this mentality kind of ingrained into them that they're just set out to prove people wrong and they don't necessarily want to take advice from other people. And kind of the analogy I would give here is if you had two different paths in a forest, you know, path A that, you know, a lot of people get through and have success through and path B that's way more difficult to get through. And someone told you, you know, don't take path B because it's way more you know difficult to get through. Why would you go through that path just to prove people wrong? You know, if you want to go through path B because that's, you know, what your calling is, then by all means do that. You know, same thing is true about college. You know, it is true that people with a college degree tend to be more successful as far as, you know, the average income that they have, but not everything's about income. You know, maybe there's a job, maybe you like working with your hands and doing construction, for example. I actually ended up doing that when I dropped out of college myself and I ended up enjoying that. I liked working with my hands and I could see that being true for somebody out there that they just like working with their hands and so getting a college degree is not really worth it in their situation. But speaking of construction and my advice to people that decide not to go to college, which once again is totally fine, is to make sure you kind of have, you've thought about the long-term plan. You know, think about somebody working construction. You know, are they going to be wanting to lift stones and, you know, wood, at, you know, when they're in the 50s and 60s? You know, is there kind of an exit strategy you may have? And kind of plan that out. You know, if I'm going to do construction for the next 20 to 30 years, maybe by the end, after 30 years, I can move into a management construction position. What does that require? Does it require a college degree or is there a certain company I need to work for? Those are things you need to be especially thinking about, even if you go to college or not, those are things you have to be thinking about as far as the long-term plan and what's kind of the end goal of both those career paths. You know, another point I want to briefly bring up that I experienced myself as well is that when people think about college, they end up kind of, especially people that don't like to be tied down, they end up not resonating too well with going to college. Especially when you think about the amount of debt and four years of your life dedicated to going to this one you know, university or college. So, and I get that. And for me, I felt like when I wasn't going to college, the reason I was doing that was because I felt more free. You know, I could work anywhere I want to work. You know, I could get a construction job in any city. I could, you know, I didn't necessarily have to worry about paying off any debt. Whereas other people would, or whereas other people for four years, you know, they were going to be 22 and still living in the same place versus I could be 22 and have lived in, lived in three or four different cities. The same could be said for a college degree. You know, you could major in accounting or HR and every single company out there would value those degrees. And so that means that there's basically bound to be a job available for you in basically any city or state you want to move towards. And so what I'm trying to get at is that if you really believe that or if you're really concerned about being locked into somewhere geographically, oh, I'm going to get stuck in the state I'm currently live in, living in and I really want to move out to a different new state, it really has more to do with your own mentality than it has to do with whether or not you get a college degree. If you are really driven to move out of the city or state, I really believe that you're going to be able to do that regardless of if you have, you know, college debt or regardless if you have a specific major or whether you, you know, decided not to go to college. If you're really driven to do that, then it really shouldn't be a factor on, you know, whether or not to go to college. And so this whole realization is kind of the same realization I came to that led me to go back to college. And so eventually I realized, you know, college is not necessarily going to tie me down unless if I let it. And so I, I was incentivized to go back to college and I, you know, ended up taking more coursework to kind of make up for the lost time. So I ended up taking classes during, you know, spring break, winter break and summer break. And on average, I probably took an extra like two to three classes per semester. And the reason I mentioned this is because had you talked to me, you know, a year or two before that, I would have thought you were crazy that I would take that much coursework. I would have thought there was no reason to go back to school and that school just wasn't for me. And but looking back now, what I realized is that I was able to accomplish a lot more than I had previously thought. And I believe the same is true for anybody listening to this is that you are if you're hesitant about going to college because you don't necessarily believe you're smart enough or you don't necessarily believe you're capable enough. That is absolutely not true. And I truly believe that anybody out there can accomplish more than what they're accomplishing right now. You know, so definitely realize that you have way more potential than you, you may be aware of. So kind of to complete the story, I ended up going back to a community college and I what, what I realized at the community college is that it's such a great opportunity because it's really cheap to go to a community college. And on top of that, there's a lot of advantages that you may not necessarily be aware of. For example, 
for a lot of um, colleges, when you transfer community college credits, they pretty much just transfer just as credits, whether you got an A or B or you know high grade in that class or not. It's kind of irrelevant once you transfer to your final university or college that you're going to graduate from, and that can be a huge advantage because you know for some people that did poorly at you know the college they, they started off at and they got bad grades their first and second year, that GPA stays with them. Versus somebody who transferred from a community college, that may not necessarily be the case, and their calculated GPA only relates to the last two years of their college. So that could be a huge advantage, and that's something I at least wanted to mention to some people. And so eventually I went from a community college off to a state college where I eventually got my bachelor's at. And what I would say here is that in retrospect, looking at the state college and the community college, as well as the private college, and the quality of education that each one held, you know, it pretty much was the same as far as me retaining that knowledge afterwards. And that same is true for other people too, as far as other students I saw. You know, obviously the testing, or maybe not necessarily obviously, but the testing at a community college was fairly easy in comparison to a state college. But as far as me learning the actual knowledge and keeping that knowledge and retaining it, that had more to do with my own self than it does, you know, as far as the university. Nobody out there can force you to learn something as far as you actually being the one to use it. It more has to do with yourself and that's something you have to take ownership and responsibility for. And to kind of sum up this video and give my last big advice here is to be confident in your own decision making process, but at the same time to be flexible. You know, what I see with a lot of people as far as asking whether or not to go to college or whether it's worth it or not, is that they almost are just trying to seek somebody to make that decision for them. You know, and at the same time, if I, if in the back of my mind, I'm kind of thinking, oh, I don't necessarily need college. And I speak to somebody that gives really great points about why I should go to college. I pretty much just, it just goes, you know, in one ear and out the other. And I don't necessarily even really evaluate what they're saying. So I, I have found that at the end of the day, the decision just has more to do with your own self. You're the one that's gonna have to live with that decision. So really be confident and make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Don't necessarily just make decisions because you're trying to prove other people wrong. But at the same time, you're gonna have to be flexible. You know, if you find yourself committed to an idea as far as I'm going to college because I'm being told to do it or it's because what I believe is the right thing to do and you find yourself one to two years down the road realizing that hey maybe this isn't right for me don't necessarily just stick to that idea because it was the decision you made to begin with you know have the humility to evaluate yourself and realize maybe I should kind of pivot my my career path or my plan and the same is true the other way if you find yourself not going to college because you think oh I can you know make a lot of money elsewhere I can start my own business but you haven't started a business five years after you graduated high school, you know, maybe you should consider going back to college. Maybe that is an option. Don't be so rigid in your, your decisions, but at the same time, still be confident in it and also take ownership and responsibilities for those decisions. So that's it for this video. I know this topic can kind of be a big, scary topic for a lot of people and that it kind of causes a lot of people stress about it. But what I would say is that it's not necessarily going to define your life and it's not necessarily going to be the key to whether or not you're happy in life. But if you found this video useful, or at least I hope you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked this or appreciated this, these types of videos. And if you like personal finance, business, or anything economic related, I post a video pretty much every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes Saturdays as well. So please hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more.